I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. So throughout the years, I've been fortunate enough to travel to wine regions all over the world, have visited a lot of really crazy regions, and almost all of the great regions of Europe, but there's one that's really on my bucket list and it's kind of eluded me, but I'm going there today. I'm nearing the end of seven straight weeks on the road here in Europe to shoot content. I kind of smell a little bit. I need to do laundry. Also, last night at dinner, I dropped my secondary camera and broke one of the brackets that holds the screen together, and I need this camera, darn it. Last night before I get to the hotel, a few producers dropped off some wines at the hotel for me to taste. I gotta get that tasting done really quickly before I leave. Let's get it. Time to taste, taste, taste. Sometimes I like to visualize myself as like the James Bond of wine. A martini, shaken, not stirred. Although I don't have the good accent, I don't have the big expense account, and I don't drive cool cars. <laughs> It's a balmy 40 degrees in Florence, and Santa Maria Novella is stuffy, so I'm ready to bust out of here. I'm heading north. This is the most excited I've been in a while, and I can't wait to get to my final destination. I'm excited to take you along for the ride. After a few hours on a high-speed train and a transfer into the mountains, I'm almost to my first stop and it's considerably cooler here. So I finally made it to Trentino Alto Adige in Northern Italy. Trentino Alto Adige is maybe two regions lumped together as one. You have Trentino, which extends from Lake Garda up to the city of Trento, more Italian speaking. Then you have Alto Adige, which goes even further north, which was part of Austria in the past. They still speak a lot of German there. Alto Adige is getting a lot of press lately for really zippy, racy white wines, while Trentino kind of gets left in the I'm going to a conference on Muller Fergal. I'm also excited because Trentino is home to one of my favorite sparkling wines in Italy, Trento Doc, Trento DOC. Let's see what the valley holds for me. The village of Cembra sits high in the valley of the same name. At 900 meters in altitude, it's cool, even in July. I'm here for the Rasenia Muller Thurgau, a festival that celebrates this unique variety. This is the 35th edition of the festival and wine competition. I also learn a valuable piece of information. So this is going to be really funny as I'm on a press trip with all Italian speaking journalists. Everything's in Italian. The Italiano un poco. We'll see. At least I have the wines. We'll see how it goes. In the evening, we head to Poieri Sandri, a winery that helped put Muller Thurgau from Cembra on the map. I used to buy these wines when I lived in Singapore, so it's a bit surreal that I'm here. Tonight, it's all about the Trento Doc wines, which are some of the best value for money sparkling wines in Italy, but more on them later in the video. This trip is already off to a fabulous start. Wow. <laughs> Looks like I get the legit e-bike. Today we're going on a little ride. I always look so stupid with a helmet or a hat. <laughs> And we're off for an e-bike ride through the mountain vineyards of the Valle de Cimbra. I had my power turned off when I started. I was wondering why it was so hard. These vineyards are amongst the most beautiful I've seen throughout my travels. This is absolutely spectacular. Ooh. This is truly heroic wine growing. Without the help of the e-bike, there's no way I would have made it. <sighs> we sit down for a light and refreshing lunch. No idea what it is, but it's super refreshing after that ride. What do you think of this? <laughs> we start with an outstanding example of Muller Thurgau. I say this is very good. <laughs> Green apple, a lot, of, a lot of lime, lemon flavors, a little bit of grass. It's really delicious. If you love bubbles, you need to be trying Trento Doc wines. I go on and on again. Trento Doc is my favorite sparkling wine in Italy. A lot of value for money. Same varieties, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Meunier, Pinot Blanc, made in the Champagne method. Affordable, crispy, just straight up delicious. Italian food is all about seasonality, and I love the local produce. 
It's so refreshing in Italy to be eating tons of vegetables. Like there are very few things like eating fresh ricotta. It's like complete creaminess in the mouth. Oh. Fruit, meat, cheese all in one dish. Interesting combination with the sweetness of the fruit balances with the sweetness of the beef. In Italy, I love gelato, but this is something completely different. I am completely shocked. Olive oil works in gelato and ice cream flavor. I feel like it shouldn't work, but it works. <laughs> I asked for a visa, the second one, because it's so good. This is just completely surprising. Olive oil and gelato? Come on. Trentino is famous for its grappa, and today we're visiting Bruno Pilzer Distillery. Grappa is a great brandy made with the leftovers after the winemaking process. It's a high alcohol liqueur used as a digestive after a meal. 10% of Italy's grappa production comes from Trentino. Since I've been coming to Italy more and more, I've really started to enjoy grappa. Bruno Pilzer is a well-regarded distillery, and he makes varietal grappa, which is completely new to me. I used to hate spirits, but since I've been coming to Italy more and more, I do drink them as a digestive, and I think it works pretty well when I'm pretty full. It's weird to have monovarietal grappas, and they all smell really different. Moscato smells like Moscato. The Schiava smells like a Blanc de Noirs. Mulder smells like green apple. <laughs> do that again, do that again. Even the Traminer has like that bitter Gewürztraminer flavor at the end. It's so weird. <laughs> I love eating in Italy, and tonight I've found a new dish. Mm, bread, milk, ham, salt, cheese. I'm gonna try to make this at home. <clears throat> mm and it pairs well with the local grape variety. Schiava sour cherry light raspberry has texture. Something I'm gonna drink during the hot summer days. Super good, actually. You all know that I like light, easy drinking red. I like ones that have texture. It's like somebody actually cares about it. I think I'm gonna become a Schiava lover. In Italy, great charcuterie is common. But in Trentino, these vegetables have always been important during the winter months, when fresh options weren't always available. I love all the pickled stuff. <laughs> now onto the dolce, the sweet stuff. I can't get enough crostata in Italy for breakfast or dolce or dessert. This beauty is made from chocolate, biscuits, nuts, butter, and heavy cream. I love chocolate salami so much in Italy. Reminds me of like a way better, richer version of Cocoa Puff cereal and Crunch Bars, but way better. <laughs> During this trip, they're making me earn my lunch. Today, I'm getting a more intimate look at the valley. While working in a sweat, something really hits me. It's incredible that the local winemakers take so much effort to work on these steep slopes. It's covered with Moller Thurgau, a grape that's not well-renowned, and it doesn't make wines that command high prices. This is what makes wine special, the dedication to culture and tradition. Not a bad way to end a hike. <laughs> In the evening, I get the chance to see where the river meets the room. I sit down and taste through dozens of Muller Thurgaus. Tastings like this are sometimes open to the public. This one is. They are invaluable to increase your knowledge and confidence with wine. So Muller Thurgau is not a really well-known variety. It was actually created by uh, Dr. Hermann Muller in the late 19th century. It's a cross between Riesling and this weird grape called Madeleine Royale. The cross was developed to create a bunch of yield, so you could create a heck of a lot of wine in cooler climates. That's why you're gonna see it mostly in Northern Italy, kind of throughout Central Europe and into Germany. Green apple, grass, and mineral notes really come out in the best examples. They always have fairly soft acidity. What I mean by that's not sharp at the edges, so kind of easy for a lot of different people to drink. To me, they are just kind of solid white wines, although I found a, a few examples, and I think kind of edge close to that 90 point barrier that us wine geeks really care about. In the evening, we're in for a real treat. To show off the food friendliness of this grape, Mimi Cataniwa, a contestant in MasterChef Italia season 11, is preparing simple Japanese dishes to pair with Muller Thurgau. I'm here in a tiny town in Northern Italy, eating Japanese food prepared by a master chef, pairing with Muller Thurgau. That's weird. The pairing actually brings out some of the fishy, the salmon flavors. I think the pairing's actually really good. It's just you don't feel too much of the wine, but it elevates the food. My favorite is the open-faced gyoza and the chicken. I love how every country has its own take on fried chicken. But this has ginger in it, so we'll see. 
ginger Mulathurgal works. Maybe I'll try it with some Thai food with ginger. It works really well. We close the evening with some brilliant Trento docks before dancing the night away. The party rages on in a local cellar until 5 a.m. I'm a little slow after seeing the real Valle de Chambre last night. Oh, well, here we go. Gotta be on the helicopter. At this height, I gain even more respect for the work that goes into these unforgiving vineyard slopes. This is undoubtedly one of the world's most beautiful wine regions. It's right up there with the Douro in Portugal, the Mosul in Germany, and Dalmatia in Croatia. Yeah! Woo! Up here, I see all of Trentino and my final destination to the north. That was awesome. <laughs> Just 40 kilometers north is the village of Tramon, and it's my final destination on this trip. Ah, so I finally made it to Alto Adige, really special part of the world. This is the last really kind of great region, I think, in Italy that I really wanted to visit, known as Sud Tirol because it was part of Austria. German is the primary language here. It's really unique because when you pass over from Trentino to Alto Adige, the landscape kind of stays the same, mountainous, but the, the people change quite a bit. Lots of beautiful, racy white wines at affordable prices when I think of Alto Adige. I think of great cooperatives like here I'm at Cantina Tramon, think of Turlan, I think of Nas Magrid, and a variety of others. There's surprisingly a lot of good red wine here, especially Pinot Noir, La Grinds, a unique grape, Schiava, even finding some Cabernet Merlot. Really a varied place. Gunther is the head of public relations at Cantina Tramon, and today he's going to take me through the vineyards. Like a lot of wineries in Alto Adige, Cantina Tramon is a cooperative winery, which means that many small wine growers pool their resources under one label. These vineyards are spectacular and are capable of producing some of Italy's most notable white wines. Back in the winery, I get chauffeured up to the boardroom and Gunther starts popping bottles. We start with the entry-level wines from Tramon. I love even entry-level Pinot Bianco from Alto Adige because it's just so delicious. You get lime, Thai basil, it's spicy, it's fresh. They're really the type of wines I, I wanna drink all the time with almost any type of food or by itself. This is actually really good fresh Pinot Grigio. It's not boring, it's tangy. It's good. What I love about the wines of Alto Adige, especially the fresh whites, is I think at every price point, the wines are excellent. Now on to a reserve Gewürztraminer. Is it a single vineyard or? or it's a single or? vineyard and uh, it comes mostly from this area where have, we have been before. Like hits you like a lot of white and yellow flour, a lot of pepper. It's like really spicy. That's one of the best dry Gewürztraminers I've ever had. I don't like to drink a lot of dry Gewürztraminer, but I would drink this. Pinot Noir can be quite good in Alto Adige, and these bottles surprise me. The Pinot Noir and Alto Adige taste distinctively different for me. I get a lot of like sweet mountain raspberry flavors, and that's the case here. It's really good. Pinot Noir, Alto Adige, get at great price points. Really good value for money. For a variety that doesn't offer that much value for money, generally. <laughs> My only regret is that I cannot stay here longer. This trip to Trentino Alto Adige has been way too short. I hope to spend a lot more time here in the future. I really have fallen in love with the people, the food, obviously the scenery is absolutely outstanding. Until next time, I'll see you then.